In the advanced exam, there will be two examiners and two candidates. One examiner will ask you the questions and one examiner will help the first examiner and make notes. The other student with you could look like this, uh, but they could also be like this. You never know who will be with you. Part one of the exam is an interview. Questions like, where are you from? Do you like studying English? Do you do any sport? Then we move into the serious stuff. Part two, you are given some pictures. You must talk about the pictures together. It's very important to do that. The examiner will say something like, I'd like to talk to you together for three minutes. Here are some pictures showing different ways how computers affect our lives. First, I'd like you to talk to each other about how these pictures show the role of computers in modern life. And then I'd like you to decide which picture best represents the difference that computers have made to everyone's daily life. Now, there are three key things here that you must do. You must talk together, talk to each other about how these pictures show the role of computers in modern life. What can you see in the pictures? What do they represent? And then finally, you must decide together which picture best represents the difference that computers have made to everyone's daily life. Don't get sidetracked and speak about one picture all the time. You must try and cover everything and then finally decide which one is the most important picture to show how computers have changed our world from maybe 20 or 50 years ago until now. What is the most important change that computers have made? So here are all of the pictures together. As you can see, there are lots of different themes and how we can use technology differently in our lives. And the first vocabulary that springs to mind is in the first picture education and there's some more vocabulary there if you like you could pause the video to check on the vocabulary i will be using it in a moment the second picture uh, the first thing that springs to mind is finance and industry pause the video if you need more vocabulary then we've got communication then entertainment, and finally, online shopping. So while I am talking about how the pictures show the role of computers in modern life and which one best re represents the difference that computers have made, I'm also going to be going through a mental checklist to show the examiner how good my English is. And in that, I will try to use different grammar. I will try to speak in the past, the present and the future. I will use different vocabulary. I will try not to repeat words. I will use synonyms to show the breadth of my vocabulary. For example, in the first picture, education, instead of repeating school, 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 I might say, classroom, computer lab, education, learning, etc. And I will also try and do some tripling. This is what politicians do, where they say things like, we are going to be in the next parliament, we are going to be tough on education, crime and NHS, where I say three things. So for example, in the entertainment uh, picture, I could say they are playing video games on a console like Xbox, PlayStation or Nintendo. I'm not only showing my vocabulary knowledge, I'm showing my cultural knowledge. The third thing on my mental checklist is to compare and contrast. For example, words like whereas, however, but. Uh, the first picture is more uh, 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 than comparing and contrasting vocabulary. Keep putting that in. And finally, the last thing is to try and insert a conditional sentence somewhere. If you can use a, a second conditional or a third conditional, it really shows that you know your grammar. 
For example, the um, communication picture, we have the retired pensioners communicating online. And if you can say something like, if I had told my grandmother that instead of writing a letter to her brother in Australia, she could speak to him instantly on video, she would have been amazed. That's an incredible uh, illustration of your command of English grammar. And if you can put in one of those into your answer, then you can just hold up your hands and walk out of the room saying, thank you, good night, because you're going to get absolutely fantastic marks for that and really impress the examiner. And that's all you're there to do. So now I'm going to try and give you a high level sample answer to this type of question. And all the time I will try to remember to answer the questions that I have to answer and try and cross off the things on my mental checklist. Obviously, I'm doing this on my own, so I don't have a partner to work with. If I was in the exam, I would ask for the other person's opinion from time to time and try to enter into a natural conversation. So here is my sample answer. The first picture in the top left hand corner obviously represents education. We've got three school children in school uniform and this is a completely different classroom uh, than when I used to go to school. Uh, they are gathered around a computer, there's no teacher there and they're probably involved in some collaborative learning of some task based solving uh, problem. The next picture on the right in the top right hand corner we've got banks and banks of computer screens. This is probably a stock exchange. So we're talking here about finance industry and international trade and commerce where people are uh, buying and selling shares across continents uh, instantaneously. In the next picture on the left, we can see some pensioners online. Uh, this is uh, about communication. We've got video messaging, possibly Skype going on, and they are perhaps speaking to their relatives on the other side of the world in real time. If we go across to the right hand side, we can see a father and son. They're uh, both got controllers in their hands and they are playing a, a video game on their console, perhaps Xbox, Nintendo or PlayStation. And this shows how they are using their leisure time. So here this represents entertainment, how people use computers in their free time, perhaps not only for video games, but for uh, reading, reading a book or w watching a film, perhaps. And in the final picture at the bottom of the page, uh, we've got a woman getting her shopping bags via the computer screen. So obviously this is online shopping depicted here. Um, Popular websites like eBay and Amazon mean that you never have to leave leave your home to, to get what you need uh, or even to browse around. And um, the computers have really changed uh, our daily lives here because uh, we've seen a decline of the high streets where traditional shops have closed down because online shopping is generally uh, cheaper and you can find what you want uh, almost immediately. So I think actually that all the um, all the pictures uh, show an, an absolute massive kind of reshaping of our daily lives and uh, how we've uh, adapted and incorporated computers so easily. Um, and uh, if I were to choose just one picture to best represent uh, the most significant change, uh, it would be an exceptionally difficult task. Um, Finance uh, and industry is obviously a momentous importance, um, but not everyone is a banker. Perhaps it's only a small percentage of the population involved in that industry, of the global population. And uh, people, perhaps are, some people are still wary of online shopping. So perhaps those two pictures are less important than things like uh, entertainment or education. But if we consider the uh, dramatic uh, changes in computer technology advancement in the communication field, it's uh, nothing short of astounding. How I used to live when I was a child, we, we didn't even have mobile phones. So video conferencing is quite astounding. If I had told my grandmother that, uh, that soon 
instead of sending a letter to Australia and waiting months for a reply or having to spend an incredible amount on a, a, a phone call in the middle of the night that she could actually speak and almost touch her, <laughs> her, her brother's face uh, she spoke to him in Australia on a video call, she would have been absolutely amazed and possibly she wouldn't have been able to have, uh, even believe that that was possible. So I would plump for um, the communication picture with the pensioners as the, the biggest change to our lives, even though the others are still incredibly important. Wow. Well, I was speaking very quickly there, perhaps too quickly, but um, I was just trying to uh, illustrate how much vocabulary and how many ideas you can actually squeeze into that short amount of time that you are allowed to speak in the advanced exam. All the time I was trying to consider my mental checklist and also how to um, answer the questions in the best way possible. Uh, I was trying to use different words uh, I was thinking about the past, present and future. And I think I just got a conditional sentence in right at the end there to uh, finish in a great way to impress the examiner. If you want to see a transcript of what I actually said, then please click on the link below the video here in YouTube and go along to our school blog, uh, which is SGI in central London. And uh, yeah, have a look at all that uh good vocabulary or impressive vocabulary for the examiner that I was uh, using there. And whenever you sit the advanced exam, I wish you the very, very best of luck. Just remember to stay calm. The examiners are there to help you. And it's your big chance to show how great you are at English. You wouldn't be sitting this exam if you weren't a very, very good high level English speaker. And so this is your opportunity to show off. Just take it in a relaxed way and I'm sure you'll do absolutely fine. <laughs>